This is not like a communion message. It's just a message of thought. Jesus spoke in pictures. And so when we look in John, when he's sitting with the intimate 12 and John's leaning against his, his breast and the other guys aren't really knowing what's going on and he gives, he gives it to Judas, he says, now take it, but make, make your decision quickly. Is I think oftentimes that we're caught between two tables and, but we need to make our decision quickly because if we don't make our decision quickly, we end up sitting at the table of demons, which is isolation, condemnation, guilt, shame, and every other work of the flesh known to mankind. But if we make a decision quickly and we sit at that table of intimacy, that's a table of exchange, of life, of engagement. That's why many of us at times are weak and are sick and we bring all this stuff on ourselves because we, we're not recognizing what he's actually done from us for us by giving us a new and living way. We're unwilling to be authentic and vulnerable with each other. Jesus was authentic and vulnerable with the guys. He took his garments off to prepare them, right? So when we come together, we should be willing to take our garments off and be vulnerable with each other. And James says, confess your sins one to another, right? And that word confess means engage. You know, in, engage with each other. Be intimate with each other, come. Let's reason together. Let's talk this out. Paul called the disciples to himself oftentimes, right? So did Jesus. We need to come together in an intimate, engaging fashion so we don't get weak and sick. And if we refuse to do that, we're unwilling because he's made us righteous. And, he, and, and Paul urges us to walk worthily of that calling. And if we're worthy to walk, then we recognize the fact that, ah, I don't need to sit at that table anymore. I don't need to sit there. He goes on to talk about, you know, crucifying Jesus again, you know. I think that's what the table of intimacy is. You know, if you look back at David and Jonathan and David and Saul, David didn't put Saul's armor on. He actually still honored Saul in many ways by not killing him when he, was, when he could have had that chance, right? Mm -hmm. But with Jonathan and David, they took their garments off, they took to put the weapons down, and they made covenant with each other. And everybody in this room are in covenant with one another through Jesus, right? So they took their garments off, willingly, made covenant with one another, actually changed positions where the son of the king exchanged that title to the king. That's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Jonathan could have been king, the way things work, but he took his garments off, gave those garments to David who became king. So Jesus took his garments off, both in the feet, foot washing and then on the cross, we took all garments off in order for us to be sons. Because we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. We don't have to do that anymore. And if we don't look at the picture where, I, I just think it's really kind of a prophetic picture of the church. We line up, take communion. We don't give it any thought. Yet we're not intimate with each other. And then we wonder why these things happen. Because on, we're sitting at the table of demons, drinking the cups of devils, without drinking the cup of blessing. You know, the boys on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize him until he blessed them by breaking bread. The breaking of the bread, the one loaf, as we all come together in our homes, in our churches, is a loaf of blessing. And when we bless people, reproduction and multiplication happens. So then, because David made covenant with Jonathan, as, as Steve has been teaching on Meshebetheth, yeah. yeah. he sat at the banquet table of, of the king forever. Because he made covenant when he was intimate with Jonathan, and he blessed his son. Who can I bless? That should be our attitude. Who can we bless? That's the table of intimacy. When we're caught in a, in a pickle of, you know, I, I want to do this or I'm caught, we don't have to do that anymore. We have a choice. We can walk worthy of our calling and, and, and come together intimacy in life exchange. Isaiah 61.4 To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning. Festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. That is us. That is where we sit. That is our position. That's our disposition. That's our character. That's the table of intimacy. So when we're sitting at those two tables, 
we can turn and Jesus says, make that decision quickly. But we don't have, we, we can go there. We can make a life exchange of intimacy and a life exchange for, for his righteousness and, and the beauty that we're called for sons. And I think if people looked at it from more of a picture in, our, in your mind of maybe two tables, you know. I mean, Paul speaks about it as well. You can choose the law of wages of sin and death or you can choose the life of liberty in Christ. What table do you want to sit at? You can sit at that table, that's fine. I think that it's, sometimes it's a harsh language that people speak, but I don't think Paul means it in that way. I just think he means it kind of, hey, this is, what, this is what's going on here. Right. You, know, you, can, you can do that, but there's going to be consequences for that. Or you can do this, and then you're going to be free. Which table do you want to sit at? But I think it's important for us to care for one another, bring everybody in, be authentic and vulnerable, love each other, teach each other, and really encourage people to be free. We're his son. We're his daughter. I think that's the table of intimacy. <clears throat> so Acts 2.42 to 2.45. And they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling the property and possessions and were sharing with them all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Our spiritual table of intimacy where we're coming together and it's like, man, do you know what he did today for me, for, for my neighbor? You know, those guys had the same conversations. You remember, do you remember that? Remember when he said that and we had no idea what he was talking about? And maybe I, we still don't, but we're sitting down together and we're, they're breaking bread. They're blessing people. They're, they're breaking that one loaf, the body, multiplying, reproducing, sharing life. And, and I think that to just close it up, uh, I assure you, most soundly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains. Just one grain. Never becomes more but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. We've died to self. We've died to self-will. We've died to being unwilling to sit at his table because we're willing. He's made us righteous and we pursu should pursue willingness. Because when we come together, many of us are interested in miracles, signs, and wonders. Just think of the, the stuff that could happen when we all come together in that one loaf, where, there, where there's freedom and, and power and authority and love and peace and joy. That's the greatest miracle, sign, and wonder ever. And, and, and the last thought is, if I can find this, when we recognize the fact that we're sitting with him. Oh, you know the thought I had last night? Coach calls a huddle. You know, and he calls the players together. And the Holy Spirit's our coach, calling us all together in unity, right? And he's designing a play, and we're in that, right? And we really don't care what's going on behind us because we're in that pocket. We're at that intimate table. And the crowd behind us is cheering. And that could either be the cloud cheering for us or it could be the world watching what we're going to do. And then we say break and we execute. Because we're, we're there, you know, we're in together. The demons are behind us, whatever. we got things to talk about. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. In some expanded versions it says, I will reveal myself to you. I will show myself to you. I will manifest myself to you. So when we're sitting together at the table of intimacy, Jesus shows up. So next time we confront a decision, make it quickly, but choose to sit at the table of intimacy. And if you need help, call somebody. Thanks for listening. I know that was disjointed or whatever, but was that okay? That was awesome. That was good, Mark.